This is Ria. Welcome to Little Stories for Tiny People. I think we all know what time it is. Flowers are bursting forth from the ground. Baby animals are taking their first steps. The days are getting longer, at least in the northern hemisphere. Who could be calling me? Hello? An error? What kind of error? Isn't all of that true? No. Well, then what time of year is it? It's Halloween. You should be telling a Halloween story. Huh. I was really off. Thanks for alerting me to this grave error. You're welcome. Okay, you too. I'm rather taken aback by this, but I've just been informed it is not springtime. And here I was, all set to tell you this story about the first day of spring. Huh. I'm gonna have to throw this story out the window. Because as it turns out, it's Halloween. Thankfully, I have a Halloween story right here in my backup story drawer. Here we are. It's called The Spooky Sleep Train. Take it away, Zolly and Zayden. Remember, there are no pictures. You'll have to imagine the pictures in your mind. You can imagine them however you want. Okay, here we go. I may be lost in the woods, but at least I haven't been visited by the infamous ghost sheep. Lambden, that's your cue. You're on. Lambden, a young woolly sheep, was backstage in the auditorium of his school. It was Halloween, and his class was in the middle of performing the popular Halloween play, Ghost Sheep Returns. Somehow, after an energetic audition, Lambden had landed the starring role of the ghost sheep. But in the weeks since, he'd revealed himself to be a less than stellar stage performer. Lambden, you have to go now. Are you sure? Yes. And with that, Wool Shell, Lambden's exasperated classmate, pushed him on stage. He stumbled forward in front of the audience members, who were delighted by the appearance of the ghost sheep at last. Yeah, ghost sheep! Woohoo! Yeah, ghost sheep! Lambden's costume consisted of a hoof-woven woolen blanket thrown over him, with eye holes out of which he was supposed to be able to see. But when Wool Shell pushed him, his costume shifted and he couldn't see anything at all. He put his hoofs out in front of him, which gave him a ghostly appearance as he wandered aimlessly around stage. Aimless or not, it was time for Lambden to deliver his lines. Ba Ba Lambden said, trying to sound as ghostly as possible as he stumbled around the stage. Ba Oh no, said Hoofton, playing the part of a lamb lost in the woods. Not the ghost sheep. At that, the choir began to sing. Ghost sheep. The choir fell silent. The lamb, playing opposite Lambden, fell out of character. Lambden, are you okay? Lambden had fallen off stage. Ouch. One of the teachers, Ms. Woolsmith, rushed forward to help him up. Oh dear, perhaps I should have made the eye holes a bit bigger. When you weave with wool, you must take such things into consideration. Thanks, Miss Woolsmith, Lambden murmured, getting to his hoofs. Within minutes, 
the show continued, with Ghost Sheep back on stage, albeit with a bit of a limp, and with the strong sense that he would never again be cast in a school play. The rest of the day was filled with Halloween activities. The young lambs carved jack-o'-lanterns. Look at mine, guys. Doesn't it look like Professor Blinkwell when she's frustrated with us? Made caramel apples. Miss Sunset, I got caramel in my wool. Oh, dear. Wool Tina, run and get the shears. And made spider webs with wool fibers. Students, if you make your web realistic enough... Spiders may wander into it. Now that's the sign of a truly well-made woolen craft. Don't you agree? By dinner time, Lambden was relieved to be done with Halloween. It was fun. Aside from falling off stage in front of the entire school, but it was also exhausting. As he clomped up the stairs after a delicious dinner of carrot celery casserole, Lambden looked forward to a peaceful ride on his beloved sleep train, the magical train that put him to sleep every night with its calming performances and soft music. As Lambden brushed his teeth, he thought back to the other Halloweens he'd spent on the sleep train. Sure, they'd set out a few pumpkins here and there, And the towering moose usually wore a witch's hat, but aside from a few decorative touches, the sleep train was the same as ever. They'd never gone overboard with it, which was just perfect, because Lambden didn't need any more hallow. Lambden set down his toothbrush and went into his bedroom to investigate the sound. There, on the floor of his bedroom, was a little machine, and fluttering above it was a vampire bat. Ah! What what are you doing here? Me? Are are you talking to me? The bat said, coming to a rest on Lambden's bed. Lambden glanced around, but there was no one else there other than this bat, who must have been sent by the sleep crew. Lambden narrowed his eyes. Something wrong with the sleep train. The vampire bat smiled, as if he hadn't broken into Lambden's room uninvited. Not at all. In fact, I have a special message for you. The bat flew to the ground and pressed a button on the machine. There was a burst of light, and a three-dimensional image of the towering moose appeared. It came up to Lambden's knee. It was as if a tiny version of the moose was standing right in Lambden's room. The image quivered slightly. Good evening, sleep train enthusiasts. What is this? It's a hologram, the bat said, as if this was obvious. And happy Halloween. As you know, we at the sleep crew listen deeply to our customers. You've spoken. And we've heard you. After receiving tens and tens of letters regarding our Halloween sleep train rides of years past, we've decided to up our game. This year you'll be treated to an all-out Halloween sleep train extravaganza. It will both enthrall and soothe you. It will get your adrenaline pumping and your melatonin surging. It will haunt you and hush you to sleep. Get ready for the spookiest sleep train imaginable and... The hologram moose consulted her wristwatch. We are now boarding. The apparition seemed to be sucked back into the little machine. Lambden stared after it, blinking. It took him a moment to process the towering moose's message. Then he said, Look, I've had a long Halloween-filled day. If what she said was true, I'd like to ride a different sleep vehicle. 
The vampire bat blinked. How about the sleep cruise? It has a hamster infestation. Okay, the sleep plane. Uh, the landing gear is malfunctioning. Very dangerous. Although it'll be totally safe in the future. Lambden narrowed his eyes. Okay, I'll go on the sleep bus. It's out of service. Fire ants. He soon learned that the sleep submarine was rented out to a group called Spiders Who Love Sudoku, and the sleep time machine was having maintenance done 10,000 years in the future. It dawned on Lambden that there were no alternatives. It was the sleep train or nothing. Except maybe he could board the... Oh, and the sleep railroad is doing a Halloween thing, too. Ugh. All aboard. The spooky sleep train is now boarding. The towering moose's voice drifted from the button beneath Lambden's pillow. He yawned and remembered how exhausted he was from the day's festivities. Maybe he could go to sleep on his own for once, without a train ride. That's when he heard the crows. At least, they sounded somewhat like crows. What is that? Lambden strode to his open window. Perched in the tree, right outside, were dozens and dozens of parrots in crow costumes. Crow Halloween costumes are very popular among parrots, the bat said, smiling. Seriously? I guess that's their meeting spot. They'll probably be there for a few hours. Lambden shut the window, but it hardly made a difference. There's always something, isn't there? All aboard. I repeat, we are boarding precisely now. You don't want to be haunted by a sleepless night, now do you? Lambden's eyes darted from the button Now means now to the window. He felt a headache coming on. He also felt a yawn overtake him. And he remembered that despite how strange the sleep crew could be, The sleep train had never failed to give him a good night's sleep. Press your button precisely now. Lambden went to his bed and peeled back his pillow. Here goes nothing. He pressed the button. A great swirling cloud streamed upwards. He heard the vampire bat. Sounding far away. Don't you want to wear a costume? Oof. The first thing Lambden saw was an enormous spider crawling towards him. Ah! He had landed in a gigantic web. He fumbled around to escape the creature and fell through the openings in the web to the floor below. Lambden looked up, terrified to see if the spider had followed but it simply sat in the web. Then it removed its mask. Underneath, a uniformed ferret grinned at him. Of course, a sleep crew employee. Sorry, didn't mean to scare you. Just trying to create a spooky ambiance. Uh Uh-huh. Lambden dusted himself off and glanced around. He was inside a train tunnel. The same train tunnel he always fell into from the portal in his pillow. He made his way towards the light coming from a bend in the tunnel. Around the curve, Lambden saw the sleep train's tour guide, the towering moose, standing beside the open doors of the train, welcoming passengers aboard. She was in costume, dressed as a cow. What amusing pajamas you have, Sinclara. Climb aboard now. Watch your step. Darius, forgive me. What, pray tell, is your costume? I'm a lumberjack rabbit, Darius said, wearing flannel, worn dungarees, and bunny ears. 
so creative. Oh, leave the axe at the door, my dear. Okay. Landon stepped forward, and soon he was next to board. Landon, let me guess. You're dressed as a cotton ball. I'm not wearing a costume. Ah, oh, of course. You're too serious for such things. Climb aboard and happy Halloween. Thank you. Lambden boarded the train. Inside, the passengers were milling about, finding their seats and showing off their costumes. Are you a zebra? Actually, I'm going for zebra dressed as a donkey, dressed as a zebra. Hmm, okay. Creative. Lambden just wanted to rest. He rejected an opening in a row beside a poodle dressed as a cat and a cat dressed as a poodle. He rejected a seat next to a duck with a tiara on its head and one next to a porcupine dressed as a cactus. Finally, he found what had to be the quietest seat in the whole train, next to a goldfish in a bowl on his left and a sloth on his right. The goldfish wore a tiny tuxedo and swam silently in its bowl. The sloth, dressed in a panda costume, was already asleep. <sighs> Lambden sat down, buckled himself in, and felt his nerves settle for the first time all day. So what if it was a spooky sleep train? He'd just ignore all the Halloween stuff and focus on the calming performances out the window. Soon, the train filled up and began to rumble out of the tunnel. Lambden leaned back in his seat and took in the scent of pumpkin spice drifting through the air from Delilah's mist machine. He closed his eyes and... Boo! Did I scare you? The towering moose's voice came over the speakers. Guess, hello. Thank you for joining us on this special spooky sleep train ride. Our first performance will begin momentarily. Meantime, drink up that gorgeous harvest moon out the window. Lambden blinked open his eyes. The moon was a giant, golden pumpkin in the sky. A flurry of bats crossed it, giving the sense that the sky itself was part of the show. Fuzzy, weighted, or glow in the dark. Lambden turned to see a pig in the aisle with a pair of wings on its back. It was Martleby, the porcupine who handed out blankets on the sleep train in full costume. His fake hoofs were piled high with blankets. Waited, please, Lambden said, grateful to curl up under the covers. Guess it's time. Take a gander out the left side of the train for our first utterly spooky performance. Lambden turned, along with everyone else, to get a good look. The train slowed to a stop in the middle of the dark countryside. Every light inside the cabin winked out to give a clear view of the show. A crowd of clouds cleared, revealing the glowing orange moon. And as the moon was revealed, so too were the mice. There were a dozen of them each wearing a black three-piece suit and an orange bow tie. The mice stood in two lines, facing each other alongside the train tracks, and each mouse stood behind what looked like a cannon. Whispers broke out inside the sleep train. What is happening? What are those cannons for? I am in a state of anxious anticipation. With a shift in the music, several mice launched their cannons. The sleepy passengers gasped <gasps> as fiery orange balls came shooting from the cannons. It took Lambden a moment to see that the fireballs 
were jack-o'-lanterns with flames dancing within their scooped-out interiors. One by one, the pumpkins sailed through the air. Each one had a different carving. Some were ghoulish. Some looked to be cackling with laughter. Some were toothless. All had flames whipping within them. Again and again, jack-o'-lanterns came bursting from the mice's cannons. Each pumpkin flew through the air, hit the ground rolling, and settled nearby. Soon the landscape out the window was lit up by the flickering flames. The largest pumpkin of all, the harvest moon, watched over everything. Guess we hope you are feeling moved by this completely safe, spooky, yet relaxing sleep spectacle. There were virtually zero concerning incidents reported during the testing phase of this performance. Sit back and clear your mind of any worries, wanderings, or anything else that might impede your sleep seriousness. Lambden felt himself smiling at the odd show. He felt the train rumble beneath him, and it rolled away from the mice, who continued to launch pumpkins across the night sky. The show faded into the darkness as the train entered a tunnel. Guess, hello, we have entered our haunted tunnel. Research by our team of scientists tells us that creatures fall asleep more quickly after being frightened. Let's see if it holds up, shall we? Lambden squinted, searching for something. Then... They appeared, ghostly shadows on the tunnel walls. Lambden stifled a laugh. The ghosts were not scary at all. They were cartoonish, and they clearly came from some sort of projector within the sleep train. The sleep train passengers giggled. <laughs> then, inexplicably, some began to yawn. Lambden himself yawned as he watched the ghosts rove up and down the tunnel walls. Then the train rumbled out of the tunnel, and the harvest moon appeared once again. Guess, hello? It might already be pasture bedtime, but keep your eyes peeled. You do not want to miss the next bewitching performance. Lambden nestled deeper beneath his weighted blanket. His row was blissfully quiet. The train rolled to a stop. Lambden could make out several black cauldrons perched over campfires, each with a dark liquid bubbling just under its rim. Steam swirled skyward from the cauldrons. The sleepy passengers watched from their seats, straining to get a good look, knowing something was coming. A single frog hopped out of the darkness. It took a great leap and plopped inside one of the cauldrons. I wouldn't have done that, said a frog dressed as a gnome. Something swooped down from the sky. It was a witch on a broomstick. She sailed past the train with her wand outstretched, sending sparks into the cauldron, then continued her arc back into the clouds. For a moment, everything was still. Then a frog's green foot emerged from the cauldron, and another, until finally, the frog itself emerged, sporting brand new wings fluttering on its back. It flew upwards, moving haltingly with its new appendages. More frogs came hopping out of the darkness, leaping into bubbling cauldrons all over the place. 
which is zoomed down from the sky, barely missing one another as they went. Lambden tried to follow the witch's paths with his eyes, but there was so much happening, it was difficult to focus. That's when someone turned on the fog machine. A roiling mist swirled over the cauldrons. Now all Lambden could see were glimpses here and there of frogs hopping, frogs flying, witches careening downward, then upward. The passengers in the sleep train were losing track of the performance. I feel dizzy. I want to sleep so I don't have to figure this out. The fog was billowing so heavily, it shrouded the witches. Lambden watched as two of them, flying blindly on their broomsticks, crashed into each other. The broomsticks snapped, and the witches went spiraling. Ah! Ah! One of them fell into a cauldron. Is this part of the show? I am slightly alarmed by this. A second went by, then two. An enormous frog bubbled up from the cauldron, wearing the witch's hat. It scrambled over the rim of the pot and flew upwards into the fog. Guess, hello, ah, uh, this is all beautifully planned. Isn't but the towering moose was interrupted by yet another witch having a loud coughing fit. <coughs> turn <coughs> off the fog, <coughs> I repeat, turn off the fog. Within seconds, the fog thinned, and the sleepy passengers watched as the witch continued to cough whizzing aimlessly through the air on her broomstick. Medical crew, please make your way to the performance area. The passengers watched, eyes wide, as a trio of ferrets dressed in lizard costumes scurried from the train to help the coughing witch. What is happening? Is she okay? The ferrets, dressed as lizards, surrounded the witch and gave her some water. But that's all Lambden got to see. The sleep train rumbled to life and continued down the tracks, away from the witches, away from the frogs, towards the next stop. Outside, the harvest moon was blocked by a thick blanket of clouds. The darkness was absolute. Next up will be an entrancing musical performance on the right side of the train tracks. The train rolled to a stop. At the sound of bones rattling, Lambden felt a tingle run up his spine. He sat up in his seat and peered into the darkness. Are those wind chimes? As if on cue, the clouds parted revealing the harvest moon, looking larger than ever. Wow. So beautiful. The train was in the middle of nowhere, with nothing but rolling hills as far as the eye could see. The stars shone brightly, as if fighting for attention. Lambden could see nothing else, until spotlights lit up the ground, revealing... Skeletons? Oh, they're so cute. About a dozen skeletons stood upright beneath the harsh lamps. Lambden recognized the skeleton of a sheep, one of a lizard, a bird. Some were more difficult to figure out. Just as he studied a small one, it began to dance. All of them began to dance. It was a slow dance. And every few steps, the skeletons would rattle their bones. It may not sound relaxing to watch dancing skeletons and to hear bones rattling, but it was to the passengers on the sleep train. Yawns went up all over the place as the animals settled into their seats. Lambden's mind grew hazy as he studied the dancing bones weaving past one another, spinning in slow circles. 
The goldfish in the tuxedo continued to swim in silent circles, but now its eyes were closed. The sloth on Lambden's other side looked out the window beneath drooping eyelids, a drowsy smile on his face. Guess, hello, please do not cower from this unique skeletal performance. Our dancers have been practicing non-stop for 27 weeks. Lambden felt heavy in his seat. He looked lazily out the window at the dancing bones. He watched as a mouse skeleton leapt through the gaps in the ribs of a pig skeleton. He watched as what looked like a chihuahua skeleton rode on the back of a Great Dane skeleton. Somehow, he didn't know how, it was mesmerizing. The harvest moon looming in the sky, the stars twinkling as if they were light bulbs flickering on and off, the skeletons with their rattling dance. Lambden felt his eyes droop closed. His mind quieted. The first thing Lambden heard was a strange-sounding crow out the window. He blinked his eyes open and sat up in bed. Sunlight flooded his room, and it took a moment for his eyes to adjust. He got up from his bed and clomped to the window. Sure enough, there was a single parrot in the tree outside, dressed as a crow. The rest of them had left in the night. Only this one remained. The stalwart, fake crow, not ready to return to life as a parrot. Lambden chuckled to himself. Somehow he knew that this parrot crow would have kept him awake all night in his bed. Lambden felt a rush of gratitude for the sleep crew. They might have odd ways of inducing sleep, but they never failed to give him a good night's rest. Outside, the parrot flew away, awkward in its costume. Lambden smiled to himself, then went off to prepare for the day. I hope you loved this story, and I hope you have a very fun Halloween. Little Stories for Tiny People is written, performed, and produced by me, Rhea Pector. My in-house tech director, Peter Kay, runs my website and puts my stories on the internet for all of you to enjoy. Thank you to my Little Stories premium subscribers who are truly making it possible for me to keep doing this. If you'd like to become a premium subscriber to get more stories, ad-free listening, and access to Little Stories for Sleep, an exclusive bedtime podcast, you can visit littlestoriespremium.com. Thank you to Zolly and Zayden for the super important reminder message at the beginning. And thank you to the many premium subscribers who supplied sound effects used in this story. Thank you to Lexi, Mala, Lamont, Pearl, Mac, Leo, Lewis, Eva, Taya, Journey, Imogen, Beatrice, Hannah, Maxwell, Jeremiah, May, Sylvia, Dallin, Eli, Ava, Sylvan, Kieran, Luna, and Lauren. And thank you, as always, for listening in.